let's say this is the uh, sample python code which gives you the records based on cursors as the offset increases skip will become slower now what does that mean which is quite you know nonsensical right it doesn't make sense so this works well for large data set but there is a catch as i told the catch is that Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting video. So in today's video, we're going to discuss how can you make paginations in MongoDB faster, right? So first we'll discuss about the traditional way of doing pagination that we do usually and what is the limitation in that and how can you improve the pagination uh, in MongoDB using other techniques, okay? When you are designing APIs, pagination is a must thing, right? Uh, to improve API performance. Traditional way of doing pagination in MongoDB is using the offset based pagination. This is the first technique that we usually adopt. So in offset based pagination, what we do, it's one of the simplest form of pagination and we use offset to skip records and limit the number of results that we want in the output. And if you see one example, let's say you have API endpoint like get items, offset is equal to 10 and limit is equal to 5. In that case, what you do, you ideally, you usually do a dot skip of 10 and then dot limit of 5, right? Well, uh, the benefits of this are, it's easy to implement, but the main thing is it only will work well for smaller data set. If you have a larger data set, you'll fall into oh, troubles uh, of API slowness because if you go to the documentation, official documentation on MongoDB, uh, where they've explained about skip, they mentioned explicitly that the skip method requires the server to scan from the beginning of the input result set before beginning to return results. As the offset increases, skip will become slower. Now, what does that mean? Now, it means that uh, in MongoDB, if you have, let's say, multiple records like this, right? So, if you are doing skip tool and limit four, let's say, let's say we are discussing about skip three and limit, let's say, two. Now, what the server will do, it will start from the beginning of the result set in the database in your collection. It will first then skip the first three records then give you the next two records as the output. But now just imagine one thing. If the skip increases to let's say someone makes it 1 lakh or 10,000, how what will be the implication on that? Your server will now, the MongoDB server will now skip the first 10,000 records, all the 10,000 records, let's say these are the 10,000 records, then it will give you the two records or the 10 records, which is quite, you know, nonsensical, right? It doesn't make sense. So. That's why uh, if you have a smaller data set, it's very wise and useful to go for the uh, offset based pagination technique uh, and offset based pagination is ideal for applications where data set is small and pagination depth is limited. You don't need to go to let's say uh, 25, 25 page or 100 page, right? You, are, you, you want your user to navigate between let's say 1 to 5 pages and each page can contain 10 to 15 records. So for those kind of use cases, offset based pagination will work usually good for you, okay? Now the next technique is about the page based pagination. Okay. This is a variant of the offset based pagination where you explicitly pass the page, page and the size of the number of records you want to fetch. And finally you create a query like this. Okay. Using the page number you calculate the offset or the skip offset that you want like how many records you want to skip and then you give the result back to the front end or the uh, client. So it's again it's simple to implement but it cons are it's inefficiency are similar to offset because finally you are doing a skip but the use cases are when you have a dashboard or a table like a table of 10 or 100 users right and you want to want a user to paginate on the 10 or 100 users 100 records and you want a user to paginate across the 100 or 200 records with uh, with 10 users being shown in one page then this kind of things you can uh, use but again the bottleneck will be all those things as the number of records grows in your application this page based pagination technique is going to suck. So then how do we improve the performance, the performance of our uh, pagination technique then? So the technique is using a cursor based pagination technique. Now what do you mean by cursor? So cursor in, uh, if you go by the definition of cursor, cursor is nothing but a pointer to one record. You go to this article about MongoDB cursor, it's, you come to another MongoDB cursor is a pointer that reflects the documents of a collection written by the find method. So find method basically it gives you one cursor or a pointer to the result set. It will give you the pointer to the starting record of the result set and the cursor you can iterate over it manually or uh, iteration can be done by the MongoDB server or in an automated manner also. So when you do directly write db.student.find.pretty 
it will directly uh, iterate over the cursor and it will print the 20, top 20 documents first. If you assign the output to a variable, let's say db.collection.find, if you assign to a variable, now it won't automatically show you the results like this. Instead, it will give you a cursor which is nothing but the pointer, pointer to the first document in the result set. Now you can uh, iterate over this cursor manually one by one using the dot next method or you can uh, manually iterate over this cursor using for loop also. I'll show you, the in, show you that in Python code. Now what happens in a cursor based pagination technique? We will leverage the uh, concept of the object IDs that we have in Mongo. Now how does it help? Now if you go to the official documentation of uh, Mongo ID, uh, Mongo object ID. So in, uh, it, it mentions that objects ID are small, unique and fast to generate and are ordered. So this is the important thing that they are ordered. There are some catch I'm going to discuss but they are ordered. That means the object ID values are at 12 bytes in length consisting the uh, first 4 byte is a timestamp representing the object's creation measured in seconds since the unix epoch. So it contains the epoch timestamp in seconds then a 5 byte random value generated once per processor so it basically contains a machine ID and machine identifier and process identifier then a 3 byte incrementing counter then using this information of 12 bytes a object ID is generated which is a long string right and the cool part about this object ID is they are ordered for example if you if you compare object IDs like this, you will be able to compare. See, at the end we have D and at the end here we have E. If D is greater than E, obviously not because D will be inserted first in the document. But if you do the other way, D is greater than A, you will find true. Okay. So using this technique, uh, the ordered nature of object IDs, we can actually implement something like a cursor based technique. I'll show you the code also, the detailed Python code, how you can implement this. Uh, but before that let's see a sample query for that using cursor based technique let's say uh, you give a cursor now you know that cursor is can can act as a pointer right in an ordered manner it can act as a pointer now using that you can define your fetch query or find query like this where id is greater than this object id that is the cursor id or the pointer the last track pointer and then you can send a result to your front end so cursor pagination it uses a cursor typically unique identifier like an id or timestamp to track position and it is more efficient as it avoids scanning the skipped records just like we are scanning records we are skipping records manually after iterating out the result set in case of offset and page based page pagination here this is not the case so this cursor based pagination will work for uh, well for large data set because based, uh, using the concept of indexing and the concept of cursor mongodb will now be able to quickly identify from from where I need to start giving the record. It will directly jump to that portion of the database. Now if I just show you the code for that sample code, let's say this is the sample Python code which gives you the records based on cursor. So if previous ID or the previous cursor is done, none, you can simply fetch it using uh, the offset based pagination. If you have a previous ID, that means let's say first you fetch the top 10 records, then you send the records as well the previous ID. Previous ID is nothing but the documents Mongo ID or object ID of the last record of the last record. Let's say if I explain you in a diagram diagram manner, let's say you are batch size is let's say 10 records. Here we have batch size right? batch size is 10 records or let's say it is two records. So what you are doing? You are fetching two records first using normal offset based pagination. Then you are sending the ID of this last record. All right to the front end along with uh, to the client along with the result set next time when the user request sends the request or the client sends the request he, he will send the object id of this record now next what you can do you can run the query like this so the mongodb now will directly jump to this point because it knows that it does the indexing it already has the indexes on, on the underscore id field mongodb by default create indexes on the un underscore id field so it will jump to this record directly and then give you the next two result set then the next time again you send the object id of this record as the cursor id of the previous id and in the next request you can directly jump to this record mongodb query will directly jump to this record and give you the next two records so if you see here you are not manually skipping the records every time right every time we are only giving you a limited set of output so using this cursor based pagination technique your api's performance will drastically improve the mongo query uh, performance will drastically impro improve so this works well for large data set but there is a catch as i told the catch is that a mongodb cursor jo hai na, cannot it does not guarantee i mean it, it guarantees order but based on some terms and condition 
what are the terms and condition is it uh, maintains the timestamp only to only up to seconds level accuracy so at the same second if two records are inserted in the database they might have uh, object ids which might not be in an ordered manner that is one case the next thing is the uh, ids are generated by clients which may have different system clocks now what are the clients let's say your node js server is inserting records to the database or a python server or flashway server or express server they are inserting the records into the database so they act as the clients now they can have different system clocks so if multiple servers are inserting records to one collection in your database you should not be using this thing but if you have a single server which interacts with the mongo database and inserts database into a particular collection and you can ensure that at the same second of uh, at the same second or the same nth second multiple records cannot be inserted so if you can guarantee those two things you can definitely go ahead with this cursor based approach i hope you understood about the limitations now there is another technique which is a time based pagination basically this is not suitable for mongodb it's basically useful for your uh, uh, time series based database like where you time time scale db or where you store or some sql database where you store time series data in a time series manner in that case this uh, type of time time based pagination works well you can uh, implement time time based pagination like this you can pass a start time and end time and your uh, time series database will using the concept of partitioning and uh, indexing it will go and fetch the records for you so that was about today's uh, video where we got to learn about how to uh, improve the pagination query performance in mongodb in your apis so if you have any doubts about whatever we discussed in this video drop them in the comment section i will be sure to answer them so let's target for 50 likes for this video if you like this video and subscribe to my channel we are targeting to reach 2500 subscribers by the end of this month so keep supporting Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.